Hi folks, I'm Craig Taylor and as always a huge thanks for joining me here on my YouTube channel The Bushcraft Padawan. If you've been following my channel for a while or you've been digging around in my channel you know that quite a few of my videos focus around what I would call basic navigation, navigation 101, introduction to navigation. And what I've been trying to do through those videos is to just encourage people and give them a bit of confidence in getting out with a map and a compass into their local area or further afield if they're comfortable with that and, and exploring and getting used to using a map and compass to navigate. For some people that may have just been getting a map of their local town and walking the streets and walking the parks. That, that may have been a stretch for some people and that's absolutely cool. For other people it may have been getting out a little further afield, maybe into some local low-lying hills or moorland. For other people it may have been getting up into the, the big hills or the mountains or in, in even more remote places. Wherever my videos, if indeed they've led anybody outdoors, wherever you've gone to stretch your navigation skills, however close to home or further afield, that's absolutely fine. The purpose of this video though is to just give you one of many insights and considerations I think you should be making when you're plotting your route, just in case things don't quite go to plan. There's a myriad of things that you should be aware of and should consider. In this video I want to look at just one of them though and that particular one focuses on what is often known or what are often referred to as escape routes. Let's first briefly look at what I mean by an escape route. Imagine you are navigating a, a stretch of a journey. Now that stretch of the journey could be something that you've pre-planned at home on a route card, it could be something that you've pre-planned in your tent or your tap the evening before, it could be something that you're kind of making up as you go along, maybe you're just exploring and you're, t you're going where, you're following your nose if you like. Between two points on that route, what if something goes wrong? What if you become injured? What if you run out of time? What if night starts to fall? What if you've been slower than you thought you were going to be? You're running out of time. What if the weather closes in? All and any and probably far more reasons along a stretch of route for you to think, this is starting to feel a bit uncomfortable. What am I going to do? An escape route might be just to keep going because you may be almost, almost at your end destination. An escape route might mean turning around and retracing your steps, that could be an escape route. An escape route could also be heading off your desired journey, either in a forwards or rear direction. It might be doing something else. It might be dropping off a ridge line. It might be climbing out of lower ground. There could be all sorts of reasons that you may wish to go off your desired route because something may not quite be going to plan. And that's an escape route. It's a plan that you have hopefully predetermined in your head that says, if I encounter a problem between here and here, this is what I'm going to do about it. If I encounter a problem between here and here, this is what I think I'm going to do about it in terms of navigating, in terms of the route that I may or may not continue to follow. What I want to share with you now are three hypothetical escape routes that I have predetermined in my head based upon some of the maps that I've got at home. Now what I do want to say at this point, before anybody starts and turns to their keyboard and starts typing furiously back at me, I am not saying that these escape routes that I'm going to show on the screen in a few seconds time and I'm going to talk about, I'm not saying that they are the only potential escape routes. I'm not saying that they are potentially the best escape routes. The purpose of this video is to get you thinking about coming up with your own plan, your own escape routes for different legs of your journey. It is not the purpose of this video to say, if this were to happen between this point and this point, you absolutely must, under no doubt whatsoever, follow this particular escape route. That's not the purpose of this video. I'm just showing some as potential examples. So if you don't agree with me, that's fine, but please don't take it out on me in the comments. This is just a, a process. It's just to get people thinking about following this type of process. Let's have a look at some of these routes then. 
If you look roughly bottom centre of the image here, you'll see a spot height 583. If you head in a north easterly direction from that, you'll then pick up another spot height 622. Imagine you were traversing that rocky outcrop, the northern part, the northern edge of that rocky outcrop between 583 and 622 heading in roughly a north easterly direction and you had a problem. Not saying what that problem might be, but imagine you had a problem along that route. One of your escape routes that you may wish to consider is to simply drop downhill in a northerly-ish direction and then head towards the shallow re-entrant that you can see leading down or leading from the, the Lake Lynn Kiri. I've probably done a terrible job of pronouncing that, but you get the idea. Dropping down into lower ground, picking up that re-entrant and then potentially heading even further north or downhill towards the, uh, the yellow road that you can see running in a roughly east-west, west-east direction. So that could be a potential escape route between 583 and 622. Let's take a look at another one. If you look roughly, roughly in the centre of this image, you'll see spot height 378. If you head in an approximate south-easterly direction from there, you'll pick up another spot height on a null spot height 509. Imagine that you were heading between 378 and 509. You'd been going maybe four, 500 metres and you had a problem. A potential escape route would be to set your compass to south and head in a southerly direction till you picked up the A470 road. Now there's a few things to consider along that route such as the rocky outcrops that are immediately south of 378 and then immediately south again of the, that rocky outcrops. There's a couple of rocky outcrops there you may wish to consider but again I would never suggest slavishly just heading on a bearing and not paying attention to what's in front of you or what the map suggests would be in front of you. But there's a potential escape route between 378 and 509. Set your compass in a southerly direction and head towards the A470. Let's take a look at a third and final example. Now a heck of a lot going on on this image, very very uh, busy map area of the, uh, the Snowdon area within Wales in the UK. If you look again roughly centre, you may take a little while to pick this up so you may want to pause the video, there is a spot height 921, roughly in the centre of the image. Imagine now that you are going to continue along that ridge line known as Cribgok, that would be familiar to many people I'm sure that are familiar with that area of North Wales. You're going to head from 921 in an approximate westerly direction. It's actually more of a south, west by south, southwest direction or thereabouts. But you're going to head in a westerly direction along that track, along the top of the ridge line. Now I know, I know from personal experience that there aren't that many escape routes off Crib Gok that are safe. There are even fewer that you would perhaps want to take a relatively novice group down and that's exactly what happened to me. I reached spot height 921 having travelled in an east to west direction. I reached spot height 921, I briefed up the relatively novice group that I was about to take along that ridge line and up eventually to summit on the top of Snowdon and after just Ten, a few tens of metres we actually came across a problem and that was um, a group of walkers had sustained an injury and were actually had called out mountain rescue. It was a fairly severe injury, someone had, had broken, it was an open fracture of an ankle, somebody had a real problem, we weren't going to get around them, I certainly wasn't going to try and get around them with a novice group that I was leading, so our escape route was to turn around and to head back the way we came. We, we descended, we dropped, we lost quite a lot of elevation and then we picked up the slightly lower lying pig track and made our way up to the summit that way. So there's an example of a skate route there is just turn around and head back the way that you were going. Three examples there. I do want to say yet again, I am not saying that they were the only escape route. 
it may depend on what the situation that you have found yourself in that determines you need to go off of your chosen route that will play a factor the purpose of the video once again i'll say this one more time is not to say this is the best escape route that is a bad escape route it's to get you thinking about the subject on that note i've got a little piece of homework for you go and grab yourself a map any map of anywhere somewhere with a relatively amount of detail that you can actually kind of look at it in the detail we've been looking at in those previous images go and grab a map pick two points on a route that you are probably capable of undertaking and then just ask yourself if it were to go wrong between these two points what would i do would i keep on going forward why why would you keep on going forward answer that question to yourself would you turn back would you actually look to do something else as some of those examples that i suggested in earlier on in this video what is it that you do pick two or three different points on a route or even completely different routes maybe completely different maps but just pick two or three different examples and just think to yourself what would i do not in terms of my action plan as such such as treat a casualty or get a fire on a pot them but if you had to go off if you had to use an escape route because that's what we're looking at in this video what would your escape route be remember it doesn't always have to be complicated sometimes and usually the simplest option is the best option so don't overthink this thank you as always for taking the time to watch to the end of this video if you've enjoyed it if you think that it's been valuable if it's made you think please do give it a thumbs up thumbs up a thumbs up if there are other people in your network that you think would benefit from this there is a share button, you know what to do with it by now. And finally, if you are not yet a subscriber, thank you once again to those of you who are. If you click in this corner of the screen here, you'll become a subscriber. And if you wanna look at my previous navigations, you'll see a playlist appearing at the corner of the screen here. Click through to that, and you'll see a whole range of videos that I've created on the subject of navigation. Take care, see you in the woods, cheers.